Ramirez, and I'm an actor, artist, and a filmmaker. My brother and I, we actually started a film team uh, about eight years ago called Five Three Films, and we started by just writing a little short comedy sketch. Well, he would write a short comedy sketch, I would make it into a drama, and we started getting camera stuff. I started taking acting classes, then we were thrilled. It took us 12 hours to get, you know, one minute. So we were like, this is working. And uh, we just kept on going and started making a whole bunch of short films, web series. <coughs> One of my favorite projects that I've worked with uh, Five Three Films was, um, there's actually two that's, that's tied neck and neck. It's called The First Kill, which is a web series. It's about a man who wants to become a murderer, and he doesn't know why, and he has these urges. Um, along the road, we find out why, and that's the twist at the end of the story. And the second one's called Adam. It's about a man who's dealing with uh, mental health issues. And uh, we put that into a film race, and it actually got top 20, so that, we're very proud of that one. If I was to choose a role I would eventually want to like stay in for the longest, it'd probably be acting. But I can see myself probably gearing towards more towards directing and just managing a set and, and you know, part of the creative process from you know, pre to post. Working with my brother is actually very amazing and very beautiful thing to do. It's, it's welcoming, it's, it's home. And I know why now like, there's a lot of filmmakers who are brothers or sisters and brothers. And it's because there's a certain chemistry that family has and a certain respect that family has. And they always say don't work with family, but that's in business. When it comes to creativity, I think that's, that rule doesn't apply. He has one half of a brain, I have another. And then when he says something and relates it to me, I don't have to think, like, what does he mean? I know what he means by being, you know, being two with him and he was five. And I was seven and he was ten. So I know if he says a certain word or a certain thing, I know what he wants. Or how, how are we going to get there? How are we going to shoot it? Or if a story comes up, how are we going to write it? So it's actually, it actually a lot of fun working with my brother. Uh, I got involved with Open Signals uh, through a project I was working on the outside. And the director knew one of the executive producers here for one of her shows. That's how I got involved with Open Signals. My best advice to give you is to... Um, be positive. I think that's I think that destroys a lot of people in this in this in this business or in this creative world. Is, you know, they get shut down or they don't know how to take a no or they don't know how to take constructive criticism and just stay positive. You know, I always say a win confirms you're good at something. A loss only allows you to get better. So with that being said, it, it's just just even when you lose, just stay positive. If you mess up or you do something wrong and they don't want to work with you again, fine, find another avenue. But just stay positive with this. Take your time. Say a short version of what you told me. Say your name and what you do. There's no short versions with me, all right? <laughs> you get long answers all the time. That's why people don't talk to me. <laughs> all right. Okay. Can you tell me when you moved to Oregon and Can I tell you what that? your path was? Classified. <laughs> Put a chair on it. Yeah. Don't answer that. Just, just answer I got involved oh. with Oregon. Say hi. Still rolling? Yeah, we are, but yeah, it's okay. We're gonna be interested. Working in open signals, <clears throat> and um, I can't work in these conditions. I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> and what advice would you give to young people entering the film industry? I don't think you have enough tape. <laughs> um, I'm Catherine Entis. I'm a Portland-based textile artist. I work mostly in the weaving and knitting mediums. So I went to the Rhode Island School of Design for textile design and also painting. Um, shortly after, I moved to Portland to work at Nike as a color designer. And actually, a few weeks ago, I quit to start out on my own and do my own textile design business. I've always loved making things. Um, when I was younger, my grandma taught me how to knit, but I didn't really know that much about knitting or weaving on an industrial large scale at all until I went to RISD. Um, and it was there that I first majored in illustration, but pretty quickly went to the senior textile design show and started to see these crazy techniques and like beautiful large scale almost like textile paintings I would call them like I never knew that fabric could look the way it did 
um, and it just made me want to learn more. I mostly for the work on my own, but recently I have been doing um, a few collaborations. So the most recent one that I did was with a local Portland artist, Chloe Cooper. Um, basically I had woven a huge scale piece of wool fabric, so it was about five by six feet. I really wanted to treat this blank textile like a canvas, and I had the idea that it would be nice if it wasn't just me going on top of it, but also another artist. I gave it to Chloe and she embroidered on it and she did these really great, like almost digital pixelated looking shapes, after which I went back in on top of what she had embroidered and did a lot of organic, like curved lines. Um, and the goal was really to treat the yarn more as paint than as thread. So I think the collaboration that I did with Chloe was really successful and I really liked how her style and her aesthetic and what she was interested in came into the work. You know, like I could see doing something with a photographer or someone working in a different medium too because I think that crossover is really interesting. So this year I decided to leave Nike, uh, my job as a color designer. Um, in order to start my own textile design business. Um, but it really wasn't more of, like much more than a hobby until I would say five or six months ago. Um, I went to an event called West Coast Craft in San Francisco and it was there that I just started to meet all these other makers and artists and designers who were working at pretty small scales, but they had their own like viable, sustainable businesses going. Um, and it really just opened my eyes up to the possibility of doing this myself and feeling like it was something that was attainable for me and that I could actually see myself doing. Um, so. My name's Amy Chow. I'm an artist, uh, visual, and perf um, performing and media artist in Portland. I'm also a producer and volunteer at Open Signal for almost two years now. So I actually studied textile design as my art training, so learning a lot about uh, construction of fabric, knitting and weaving, and that kind of led to creating costumes. I also um, create performances and document them. And I also now do some documentary work. I wanted to document my performance work, um, but then I realized I love editing. I love um, incorporating movement with uh, music. So a lot of, I've done music videos, um, making costumes for that, and just anything like musical, I really am interested in that. But I also love, like, I can't edit all the time and be on the screen. I want to use my hands, and I also don't want to be using my hands all the time, so I love having like different, um, just like making and using my skills in different sets because I tend to get uh, bored or frustrated easily. Um, there are different ways of like zoning out when you're knitting or making an object. You zone out in a totally different way when you edit a video. I love editing where I could edit like the same song for hours. In school when I was first starting to do performance art, I was really interested in Japanese game shows. So I would create like these kind of homemade, there were kind of like homemade recipe games where I would um, create a set. Um, I had one called uh, Dairy Dodge, like dairy as in milk and cheese. And then I um, knitted myself into this like baby swing. And I had, so I was interested in how I, in, in the video also there were like four cameramen. So the idea that these cameramen who are role behind the screen are part of it, they're, they're playing a role as a spectator. Um, and I think that is very important in TV and any performance um, art. In any performance medium. When I first moved to Portland three years ago, I just wanted to get back into taking classes on video. Narrow Pass kind of uh, is an ongoing exhibition that um, Open Signal started that they're they're looking into their archives of the past 35 years at Open 
signal. Um, it's very, very, uh, not, not like my performance art before, but it was a great way to learn how to use equipment and I didn't know how to uh, key and key up green screen before, so I had a lot of fun learning all of that. Oh, yeah.